Gliders travel great distances riding the invisible energy of the wind, while pilots take in stunning views of land and sea. Lift is created when the wind strikes a ridge and is deflected upwards. We soar up and down the ridge, sometimes in close proximity to the terrain. The turns are always performed away from the ridge. When conditions are light, gliders launch and must immediately turn to stay close to the ridge or risk falling out of the lift band. Use caution and allow plenty of clearance with any obstacles. New pilots fly in lighter conditions. Paradoxically, it makes them vulnerable to terrain and trees. Check your wingtips for clutching branches. Attempting to reach soar when the wind is right at the borderline for staying up is not without risk. Here there is one more tree before the pilot can get really close to the ridge and gain some height. Turns are initiated first with the pilot looking over his shoulder for traffic, followed by weight shifting and brake input. You can also add some outside brake for a smaller turn radius. Immediately after turning, the pilot steers the glider to hug the ridge and stay in the strongest lift. To descend, simply move away from the ridge and set up for landing. In stronger conditions, lift is abundant. A few sharp turns will help you get on the ground quickly. Nose into the wind, flare, and hands up. Big ears works well too. Big ears plus speed bar will get you down real fast. Let's talk about ridge rules. If you are head-on to another glider, the pilot with the ridge to his right has the right of way. The exception to this rule is if the pilot with the ridge on his left is lower. Overtaking another glider flying in the same direction is not allowed. If possible, pass between the ridge and the glider being overtaken or turn back. Make a wide turn around a wing following you closely. Or be prepared to yield for a glider who turns and comes at you. In any case, pilots may not follow the ridge rules, so plan accordingly. Ridge soaring offers a wonderful chance for sightseeing and experimenting with cross country. You can cover many miles and stay up for hours. The more cross the wind, the faster you'll travel in one direction and the slower in the other direction. 
before trying to break any distance record, fly back and forth a few times near the takeoff to assess the ground speed. Here 27 miles per hour in a quartering tailwind. And less than 10 miles per hour in the opposite direction. Pushing the speed bar can make the difference between making it back to base or hitting the deck. Gaps in the ridge cause the lift to drop or die completely. The general safe strategy is to have enough altitude before attempting the crossing. If the wind is strong, don't fly close to the mouth of the gap where the wind is funneled and accelerated. It may be best to fly out a bit upwind before crossing to avoid being sucked into the gap by the Venturi effect. Once across the gap, and assuming you're not too low, the ridge lift will resume. When the wind hits a ridge, it's not just deflected upwards, it is also accelerated. Typically 10 miles per hour will increase to 15 above and behind the top of the ridge. On a strong day, it accelerates to dangerously high speeds. Green is the safe zone, red the danger zone. In the yellow zone, the vertical component of the wind is dominant. The glider goes up fast and struggles to penetrate. That's your clue that a blowback is imminent. If the pilot fails to take quick, evasive actions, he will end up in the red zone. This is one of the greatest hazards paragliders face. It leads to tree landings or worse, landing in power lines and rotors. Get away from the ridge quickly by pushing the speed bar. Pointing the glider into the wind is inefficient. Try making sharp turns in the downwind direction to lose height and escape. Prevention is the best cure. Stay low on windy days or fly well upwind of the ridge. Never fly without an emergency landing at the foot of the side. It will be helpful if the wind weakens and also if it strengthens. A long walk back to base is not that bad. If you drop out of the lift band, it's a short ride to the bottom, especially with a tailwind. When faced with obstacles, you only have a split second to decide whether to stay on course or turn to land upwind. It's essential to visualize beforehand all the possible flight paths you will have to take along the terrain whenever things go wrong, and suspecting pilots may react too late. Practice upwind ridge side landings. When the tide is high, it may be your only safe option. In high wind, poor glider control can lead to stressful situations. The good news is, it gets better with practice. Another alternative is launching from the bottom. It's important to observe the conditions before deciding whether to fly or not. 
not just wind speed and direction, but also the gust factor, the tide, the birds and whether a front is approaching. Is it raining or snowing? Any white caps or ripples on the surface of the water? Are conditions improving or worsening? Every site is unique. Fly only in conditions matching your skills. If you are a visiting pilot, get a site intro, talk to the locals and watch the other pilots first. Let's check the forecast today. 10 miles per hour? That's good. And no rain. The next day the wind speed and direction is ok. But if it's too gusty like here, don't fly. An anemometer is a great tool to have. 11 miles per hour? Perfect. The wind direction looks good. Watch the birds soaring. That will tell you a lot about the air mass. With so many white caps, the wind is over 20 miles per hour. Keep the glider in the bag. Wanna get your heart pumping? Try a mini wing, they are fast and fun. There are many different ways to set up for a top landing. S-turns is one of them. Big ears is another one. And for the more advanced pilots, try the butterfly landing. In the mountains, you can soar wind-facing ridges until you catch a thermal and bench up to a higher level. Scratching is the art of milking weak lift. Keeping your actions smooth, progressive and fluid is the key to being efficient. Spend as much time as possible in rising air and as little time as possible in the sinking air. Get through the sink hands high and fast. Learn to fly at minimum sink. Flying in the shadow of an obstacle will expose you to potentially dangerous rotors. Build some height first or stay away altogether. Playing on a dune, launching and landing over and over again is a great way to build skills. Finally, take on new, progressively harder challenges to work your way towards the next level.